Hello and welcome to vlog number 100. This week I'm going to talk about the legalisation in the UK of cannabis medicines for prescription and the efficacy of medicinal cannabis in the treatment of Crohn's disease and power cancer. This should be a truly significant vlog, not just because it's my 100th vlog, but also because cannabis medicines have been rescheduled in the UK as of November the 1st, thus allowing them to be prescribed by specialist doctors. The reason that I decided not to dedicate this vlog to this momentous occasion is because, once again, this government has been less than truthful. They announced that cannabis medicines are now legal for specialist clinicians to prescribe and simultaneously issue guidelines that prevent anyone from actually being able to qualify for cannabis medicines. I'd love to be able to say that this is down to government incompetence and that it's an unintended consequence of poorly thought out guidelines. But I believe that the system is intended to prevent anyone from actually receiving medicinal cannabis on prescription, whilst the Home Office trumpet through the media that they have legalised it. Your average man on the street believes the headlines and thinks that it's job done. It makes me extremely angry, but I'll resist further comment until the dust has been allowed to settle and also to see what happens in my own quest to receive medicinal cannabis on prescription. On the subject of medicinal cannabis, I will instead provide an update on my friend Jenny, who has been using full extract cannabis oil, along with dietary changes recommended by a holistic therapist, to treat her Crohn's disease and the aftermath of bowel cancer. Since starting to take the oil in early September, Jenny has seen her NHS consultant twice, following a colonoscopy. The first appointment was in late September. Jenny is still receiving traditional treatment, steroids and infliximab infusions, as well as the cannabis oil and dietary changes that she has made, so that clouded the waters a little bit. Her consultant said that the pictures that they took during her colonoscopy showed a reduction in inflammation, but there was nothing to prove, one way or the other, that this was down to the cannabis oil, the dietary changes or the traditional treatments. Until they get some blood test results to show that her traditional treatment isn't responsible for this, she will be continuing with that treatment. But Jenny is pretty sure that the recent improvement in inflammation, and hence her symptoms, is due to the cannabis oil that she's been taking. This was recently confirmed when she missed three days of cannabis oil because of cash flow problems. Almost immediately the symptoms of her Crohn's disease re-emerged to be instantly banished once more when she restarted the oil. I think that at this point Jenny became more convinced that the alternative treatment was working for her. Towards the end of October Jenny had another appointment with her consultant and a surgeon who wanted to discuss surgical options with her. Her consultant was astonished that inflammation markers in her previous stool sample had gone from 3000 to just 66 on whatever scale it is that they measure these things on. And Jenny was so excited and finally completely convinced that the cannabis oil was really working that she was confident enough to tell the surgeon that she would not agree to surgical intervention, a colostomy which would leave her with a colostomy bag. And the surgeon then left the room. She told her consultant that she was taking advice from an holistic therapist and had changed her diet to include a lot of herbs, spices, vitamins and oil. Her consultant merely raised his eyebrows and said that he would be happy to monitor her progress since whatever she was doing was evidently working. Since her previous appointment, Jenny has managed to reduce her intake of steroids to just 2.5 milligrams per day and has lost 5 kilograms of the weight that she had put on because of them and is awaiting the results of tests prior to reducing them further still and also for blood test results which should show the current state of the cancer markers which were previously slightly raised. She is also still awaiting the test results that will show whether or not her infliximab infusions are proving effective, but I think that her complete outlook has been changed by the realisation of what the cannabis oil is doing for her. She is completely over the moon about it and more determined than ever to complete the treatment, whatever the cost, and the cost is significant. I feel angry that finding the money to pay for this medicine is causing Jenny and her husband Dave to get deeply into debt when this treatment should be available on the NHS and is far cheaper than the traditional treatments that she's receiving. 
particularly when a number of studies have been done over a number of years which show that cannabis is therapeutic for people with Crohn's and it is well known within the Crohn's community as an effective treatment. It reflects badly on our government that Jenny is too afraid to request medicinal cannabis on prescription because of the likelihood of being refused the one medication that actually works for her, despite the official line from the Home Office that it is now legally available. I think it is shameful. I am running a Just Giving campaign to raise money to help Jenny and Dave. So if you feel able to make a donation, then I know they will be extremely grateful. You can find this at www.justgiving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash Ian dash Frizzell. And there is a clickable link on screen at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.